Y'all excited? This is going to be an awesome year. I'm telling you right now. It doesn't matter what the world has to say. God's still the same. He doesn't change. He's almighty. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all blessing. He knows how to take care of his people. And tonight we're going to get into this thing. For the next 20 to 25 minutes, we're going to get into this thing. And we're really, I truly believe this is something that the body needs to hear and really get encouraged tonight because there is something different about a believer. Come on, there's somebody say, there is something different about me. Number one, you got Jesus in your life. Come on, you got Jesus in your heart. You got, and not only do you have Jesus, you got heaven in your heart. Not only do you have heaven, you got the entire kingdom of God on the inside of you. Come on, praise God. And, and what the kingdom of God is, it's not the same as the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a place we're going to get to. But the kingdom of God is God's way of doing and God's way of being here on this earth. And he chose to put the kingdom of God on the inside of you. Come on. Somebody ought to be honored. You chose me, God? Thank you. Somebody ought to be, pri- like you ought to be saying, man, it is a privilege. But we got too, too many. Watch this. Too many times we've got Christians who are walking around with the head down, defeated, not knowing what to do. That's why it's important that you come to a church or to a place where they're going to teach you how to walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says. And if you look at that scripture alone, we'll pull it up on the board for you. If you would just look up 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that scripture alone, very simple scripture, but that scripture alone tells you that there's something different about us. Look what it says. Very easy. Very easy to uh, memorize. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, for we walk by faith, that's we, and then it says, and not by sight. Think about that for a moment. That means to tell me there are a group of people who walk by sight and not by faith. And we don't want to be that type of people that says, hey, I have faith and I walk by faith and, and there's no evidence of it. See, right there, again, we look at that scripture. There is a different, it's saying there's two different classes of people right there. Are you with me? And we, we, we in here, so say we, we are in the first class. Class one, walk by faith. So I say walk by faith. See, so even in this scripture right here, there's a separation. There's a difference. And so tonight's title message is this, God made us distinct. Come on, somebody say, God God made me me distinct. distinct. Some of y'all, does that mean I stink? Well, I mean, hopefully not. (laughs) But the word distinct simply means, it means to be set apart. Or the main word it means is to be, watch this recognizably different. That is the definition of the word distinct, is to be recognizably different. Not just different. You're a little different, William. You're a little different, Amanda. No, no. I mean, recognizably. That means they can see something. They can see something about you. And when they see something uh, recognizably different about you, then they say something. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I remember, I mean, it's all the time, when people would say, you know, uh, I, th- I knew that there was something different about you. You just talk different. You, you, you don't, you act different, <laughs> right? How many of y'all have ever had that said to you? You know what they're saying to you without saying it? They're saying you are distinct and you're supposed to be that way 
You're supposed to be distinct. You're supposed to be set apart. See, we're not, when, when, you, when you learn, when you understand that you are distinct and that God made you distinct, you begin to start understanding that you weren't put back into this world to blend in with them. That God took you out of the world, not to just put you back in to blend in, and just kind of to be honest with you, faith, hey, you, when you walk by faith, you can't blend in. You can't. When you truly walk by faith, you won't blend in. As a matter of fact, you'll stand out. You will stand out. Matter, and here's another thing. You will actually draw attraction. Because you're different. You're distinct. You're recognizably different. Another word for it is clearly. You are clearly different. Another word is you are apparently different. Or here's a better word. You are obviously different. My wife likes to use that word obviously. <laughs> like when I say, man, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. My wife would say, obviously. <laughs> right? Well, what, what does that mean? It means that I could see that. I can see that there's something different. You are obviously different. You are apparently different. You are clearly different. Why? Because you are distinct. And when you learn this word or when you learn that identity that, whoa, God cut me out. You know, here recently I've been doing some remodeling or some painting and things like that here in our hallway, just around here in the church. And I took some panel off this wall right here down this hallway. And, and you know, underneath there was uh, sheetrock. And, and, I'm, I'm, and I've been watching these videos, Brother Tino, on how to, like, like, patch up holes. Like, if you see a hole, you know what you do is, like, if there's a hole there that you don't want, what you do is you have to cut out a little bit bigger than that hole, right? You cut it out like a little square, right? Come on, come on, Sister Vicky, all construction workers here. And so, like, you just... Cut it out, right? And then what you do is you cut out an equal, an equal size of brand new sheetrock from a brand new sheet, and you cut out another little piece right there, and then you put it back into that little hole right there, right, with the little board in the back, you know, and you put it back into there, and then you bondle it or whatever. It's, you, 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 well, you mud it. Come on, you tape it, and then, and then it becomes brand new, like a brand new wall. Watch this. Well, that's what God did for you. There was something that was missing, and there was something that really we didn't want that, so God cut you out. Come on, cut it out. You remember that? You know, full, full house? Anyway, so, there it is. all right, so, uh, yeah, uh, like, okay, so he cut you out, took you out of that hole, and then, man, he got a new piece, and he put you back on that wall, but not to do the same thing, but to make that wall look better. <laughs> he put you back into this world not to blend in, but to be distinct, purposely, different. You are now the light of this world and you are the salt of this earth. Distinct. You taste good and you make others taste good. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are y'all with me? Y'all like, oh, my gosh, really? Yeah. Look, watch this. Uh, the Passion Translation, we, we don't have it up there on the board, but I just want to I, I um, share it with you guys. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 out of the Passion Translation says this, For we live by faith and not by what we see with our eyes. In the New Living Translation, it says, For we live by believing and not by seeing. Whoa. So earlier today, we were talking about tattoos. Some of y'all, I know some of y'all folks out there, well, we shouldn't be getting tattoos. I know. But we do anyways, right? It doesn't matter. But we're talking about tattoos. And so a couple of people in here were showing me some of their tats. I mean, I got some too. But I, I, I told one of them, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tat, tat me a tattoo right here, and I'm going to tap a tattoo right here. And I'm, I'm going to shave my eyebrows, both of them. And then I want to make them, I'm going to put some words right here. Some of y'all looking at me like, what, for real? And I'm going to put some words right here so it looks like it's my eyebrow. My wife's shaking her head, no. <laughs> it's, 
post Malone. Anyway, so anyway, so I'm right. <laughs> I'm right there. Burt Malone. All right, so here we go. So it's gonna be like I'm gonna have a I'm gonna right right here. I'm gonna shave them, shave, and I'm gonna put like they're gonna look like 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 eyebrows, but it's gonna say just believe. <laughs> so when it like can I, what, what what is that on your face? What it? Oh, just believe. Mm-hmm. Just believe. Come on, somebody, amen, because we live by believing and not by seeing, but they're going to see something, and they're going to start believing. Come on, somebody, amen, praise God. All right, so, <laughs> so we live by believing and not by seeing, and that's what makes us different. We used to do it before. You, we, we used to be like Dowden Thomas. I, I, I'll believe it when I see the holes in his hands. I'll believe it when I stick my hand on the side of his uh, of, of, of his ribs there to touch his side where he got pierced. Then I'll believe. But Jesus told him, hey, that's great, Thomas, because Jesus showed up and told him to put his finger in, his, in the holes of his hands, and he said, stick your hand on the side. He said, well, that's great that you believe now that you've seen. He goes, but blessed are those who believe and yet have not seen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So that's me. that means that Thomas... That's not how you're supposed to be, and you're my disciple. <laughs> Come on, you're my di- you're one of the twelve, man. And he and he told him. I mean, he, I'm sure he rebuked him to be honest with you, but he just did it in a way. What was the word? He said, "Hey, that's good that you believe now that you see, but blessed are those who believe yet don't see." What is he saying there? He's saying you should have. And this is pre-Paul, because 2 Corinthians, that's Paul already. So Jesus was still there with them. But he was telling them, walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because I made you distinct. I made you different. I made you different. I took you out of the world and put you back in on purpose. He planted you in this world to make a difference. Amen. Amen. Because when you walk by faith, you think differently. You do. When you walk by faith, you can't blend in. That's what I told you earlier. You'll stand out. You'll shine bright. You'll attract attention, especially God's attention. And God loves when you walk by faith. Did you know, if you, if you ever said, man, I wish I could just get God's attention, start walking by faith. You'll get his attention. He'll recognize you. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? Mark chapter 5. Come on. Well, look, 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 look what separated her. Okay, watch this. She had an issue of blood, right, for 12 years, and she heard that Jesus was here. Watch this. But there was a crowd of people. All, they, he called, the, the Bible calls it thronging. They, they, were all, they were all pressing up against Jesus, all physically touching Jesus. But yet the woman with the issue of blood had to push through that crowd who was touching Jesus. She didn't even touch Jesus. She said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. And she did it. She touched the hem of his garment, and she got healed instantly. But watch this. How many people were touching Jesus? Everybody. But what did Jesus say? Who touched me? It got his attention. She, one person, distinct, somebody doing something different. And watch this. And Jesus didn't just say, well, somebody touched me, somebody got healed. And he said, oh, well, good. That's good. Praise God. And he kept on walking. No, no, no. You know what he did? He stopped because he was on his way to heal a 12-year-old daughter. And he stopped and he looked around and he said, who is the person who touched me? Because he wanted to talk to her. He wanted to have a conversation with her. It wasn't about just getting healed. Come on, somebody. He wanted to recognize you. He wanted to clearly, he wanted to see whose faith was it that touched me. And the disciples were like, what do you mean, Jesus? Everybody around here is touching you. No, no, no. He said, no. Somebody touched me. Somebody who was distinct. Come on, somebody. Somebody who was different. Somebody who was recognizably different. And here shows up the one with the issue of blood. She came to him trembling and crying. And she told him, the Bible says the whole truth. And she said that this is what I had. This is what I had going on. And I kept telling myself that I could only touch your hem. I knew that I would be healed. And you know what he said? He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. 
Now, watch this, guys. Tell me something. Who calls, in your, in your family as, as a title, who is the one who calls their, this, this sibling here, a daughter? And this is Jesus. It would only be a father. Jesus called her daughter. That means to tell me God showed up. And watch this. She got God's attention. Ooh. <laughs> Why? Because faith is like that. Faith will make you different. Faith will attract attention, especially God's. And right there was a very great example. That's Mark chapter 5. I believe it's verse uh, 24 through 34, something like that. Y'all guys want to write that down? Y'all can check that out later. But look at that. Her faith. We don't even know this woman's name. But her faith got his attention. Come on, somebody. Ain't that awesome? Come on, somebody should have hand clapped right there. Amen. Come on, I'll receive and believe. That's powerful stuff right there. So listen to what Exodus chapter 8 in verse 21 through 23 says, read this out. So, so this, is, uh, this is a time whenever Moses uh, was asked by God to go back to the Pharaoh to, uh, to release God's people. This is the, uh, God's people were still in bondage at this time right here in this scripture right here. And this was during one of the plagues. How many of y'all know that uh, there were ten plagues that were sent out to Pharaoh every time he asked them to let his people go? Well, this one was the plague of the flies. And watch what he said here. Uh, here's uh, God telling Moses what to say to the Pharaoh. He says, if you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all the houses. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies, and the ground will be covered with them. But this time, I will spare the region of Goshen. Someone say Goshen. Where my people live. What I was going to say, no flies will be found there. Now, remember, they're all in Egypt. Goshen is a part of that land, too, except for this was a portion of the land that God has set apart for God's people. And he said, in the entire land, there's going to be flies, but not in the region of Goshen, where my people live. So say, I am his people. So where you live, watch this, and it goes on to say, then you will know that I am the Lord and that I am present even in the heart of your land. Listen to what he says next. God, I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. <laughs> See, watch this, guys. God knows how to make you distinct. And that's what you've got to understand. You are distinct. You now have God on the inside of you. You've got Jesus on the inside of you. You've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You've got the heaven on the inside of you. You've got the kingdom of God on the inside of you. You've got love on the inside of you. you got faith that works on the inside of you. Come on, you got God's angels on your side. Praise God. You, and I told you already, you got the name of Jesus, the blood. you got all these things all on the inside of you. You are distinct. You are different. I don't care how many people try to tell you, hey, man, I'm just a nobody. I'm just me here. I'm just an average Joe. But you're not. I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but you're not. I understand we want to be humble. I got it. We want to be humble under God. But God doesn't need you. Listen, he don't need you to be humble out here. He needs you to be powerful out here. He needs you to understand you have power living on the inside of you that's going to make a difference in people's lives. I mean, we keep, we're struggling with this and we're struggling with that, especially sin. The Bible says in Romans that sin no longer exerts dominion over you. And if it does, it's because you do not understand that you are distinct. You don't have an understanding yet that you've been set apart by God. You're different. See, here's, a, here, here's, here's, a, here's what happens. Okay? He took you out of the world. He cleaned you. 
set you free. Watch this. And then he put you back into the world with purpose. And this purpose comes with distinction. There's a difference between you and the world. There's a difference between you and the Egyptians. There's a difference. You are distinct. You're set apart. What's this? So then you try to dabble and go back into that sort of thinking like what you used to do. You go back and start dabbling with all these little things that, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends and, and drugs and, and that. and I mean, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. But primarily, if those things are pulling you away from your distinction in him, that's the part right there that's causing all sorts of confusion, chaos, disruptions, distractions, delays, hindrances. It seems like, man, I just can't get nowhere in life. It's because you're not serving the purpose through your distinction. That's it. You get, if you can just understand that, you'll push through all that mess and get to the him and be healed and capture God's attention. Come on. Amen. Ooh, glory. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Another word for distinct. This is, what, this is how the Bible puts it is peculiar. <laughs> Look at it, 1 Peter 2, 9. Watch this. This is good. This is so good. It says, but you, don't say me, are chosen. You're a chosen generation. All right, let's get this real quick, guys. Let's, let's, let's get this straightened up right now. Let me not, well, I'm going to stay up here. Let's get this straightened up right now in this house and in those who are watching my live stream. Watch this. Get this, get this in you. You didn't choose God. He chose you. Can we get that straightened up right now? Get that straightened up right now. He chose you. He called on you. He's seen you. He's protected you. Did you know all this time, even when you were saved, God already knew that you were going to be chosen, and he protected you this whole entire time? Because you know you should have been dead. You know you probably should have been locked up somewhere right now. You know you probably should have been all jacked up, probably on the deathbed, not here at all enjoying life. You probably shouldn't have been here. But you know God protected you the entire time? Because it wasn't you that chose God. It was him that chose you. Watch this. Before the foundations of the world. He chose you to be distinguished. He, sh he chose you to be distinct. That's probably why you were known as the black sheep of the family. You were always the, cra the crazy one. Hombre, este, I can't, this one right here, man, I don't even know what to do with him. I don't even know what to do with her. I don't even know. Why don't you? There's something, right? Because you were chosen to be distinct. Watch this. You are a chosen generation. Watch this next one. A royal priesthood. What is it? Royal? We don't hear that too much around here. The only, the only thing we heard about royal was probably about six years ago that says, I will never be royal. Royal. Remember that song? I mean, I used to dance to it. I know y'all did. Y'all acting like y'all didn't. That's the only thing royal we heard or maybe like royal icy. But in the Western civilization where we live in, we don't use that royal, we don't use that word unless you're a royal pain in the, you know, somewhere, somewhere. That's the only time probably another way we hear, we hear royal, which means a high degree of a pain. You know what I'm saying? When you say you are a royal pain, that means that is a high degree of pain. <laughs> high class, you are high class pain, bro. That's what you are. That's the same meaning here. You're royal. You are a royal priesthood. You are in a high class. You are distinct. You're not, you're not low class. 
You're not middle class. You're high class. You're royal. You are a royal priesthood. You're distinct. You're different. Recognizably different. That's why people see something different about you when they see you. I mean, you try to blend in, but it don't work because you're the light. You try to blend in, you try to mix with them, it don't work because you're the salt. You taste different. You try to make it work out there in the world, but God's like, I already cut that out, bro. I put you, you're a new wall now. You got new mud on you. <laughs> Come on, I taped and bedded you, brother. I taped and bedded you. <laughs> you can't, you're like trying to make a hole in that same place. No, we don't. you're a new wall now, brand new. It looks pretty. You can't even tell that there was a hole there before. So you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And look at this next line. A peculiar people. Peculiar. In the NIV, it says you're God's special possession. You know what that means? That means you, he's got, see, watch, when you possess something, that means it's yours. It's paid for. Like some of us in here, we have a car, but we, it's, not our, it's not our, we don't possess it. Because we still owe on it. So us in here, we, we're buying our house, but we don't possess it. That thing could be taken away as soon as we don't make three payments. It's done. It's gone. Bye-bye, casa. But when you pay on it, when you're finished paying on that thing, you don't owe no debt on that house. Now you possess that house. Now you possess that car. Now you possess those items. That means you, they are yours, they're fully paid for, they belong to me. That's what God's special possession is saying. You belong to God. You are distinct. You are in God's family. Whew. Message translation says this, you are God's instruments to do his work. God's instruments. That means to tell me what he wants to play, that's what you're going to play. <laughs> you're the instrument. If he wants to drop D and E, hey, sing that in E. Then you're going to sing, oh, you're going to sing in E. I mean, you can't even help it. You're like, man, I'm God's instrument. All right, do what you want to do. All right. Boom. But when you, you, when you think that you can get out of that and not, not because you don't understand your distinction, you, you, sound out of, you sound like you're out of tune. People are like, man, that don't even sound right, bro. What do you, what do you? That's why the words that come out of your mouth, if, if, you're not, if you don't understand the distinction, the words that come out of your mouth don't make sense to people. Like, wait, aren't you, aren't you supposed to be, uh, you, you go to that church, you hear, wait, you don't sound right, bro. What happened to you? Well, you don't sound right, uh, girl. What happened to you? You're like, oh, heck, man. I stepped out of my distinction. Yeah, that's what you did. Get back to it. Because watch this. If you don't understand that you're chosen, and you don't understand that you're royal, and you don't understand that you're holy, that's why you can't understand that you're peculiar. For you're different. You're distinct, and you are not to operate or blend in or try to do things that the world does. You got to understand that you're chosen. Not you chose God. God chose you. Not that you're, not that you're, uh, that you're low class. You're not low class. No matter how much you want to put it on the back of your window on a low rider car, Low class car club. I got you. I understand what you're saying. But we're not that. We're royal. And the third one, you're holy. Holy just simply means you belong to God. It means that you're set apart. It means that you're set apart to do what he wants you to do. You're the kingdom of God. You're peculiar. You're different. You're distinct. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? 
So the Amplified says that uh, when it says peculiar people, it says God's own purchased special people. And here's what the word peculiar is defined in through uh, the definitions that I found was unusual. It even says strange. Well, some of us are a little bit strange. That's why people think of us as strange. When you walk by faith, you're going to be strange to people, to be honest with you, especially if you pray in the spirit. And they hear you. <laughs> One time I was doing that in front of my mother-in-law because she takes care of Remy. And I, I just kind of started praying in the spirit just out of the blue. She looks at me. She's like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, oh, I was just praying in the spirit. Yeah, but what were you saying? I was like, I don't know. I was talking to the Lord. I was just praying in the spirit, talking to the Lord. She's like, does he know what you're saying? I was like, yeah, he knows what I'm saying. But how do you know what you're saying? I'm like, I don't. I said, but throughout the day, later on today, God will reveal to me what I prayed right there. And she's like, then she says, God will speak to you? I was like, yeah. I mean, you know, my mind, I can feel it in my heart. She's like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. But they think you're a little strange. See, if I wouldn't have gave her all that, if I wouldn't have gave her, like, some sort of, like, something to, like, okay, explanation, she'd be like, stay out that look. <laughs> you know? That means this guy could be crazy. He's crazy. It was so, like, strange. And that's what the word peculiar means. And that's what it is. The people that don't know anything about faith, you, there's something strange about you, too. And that's okay. <laughs> somebody, somebody one time said, hey, they were like, they were like, man, you know, now that they pray in the spirit, man, they're weird. And the answer, the answer back was like, you know what? They were actually weird before they prayed in the spirit. Anyways, <laughs> they're like, they're just weird people. Anyway, so, anyways, uh, so unusual, strange, what's this? Unique. See, that's why God gave me a wife that is named Monique. I mean, she's more than unique. You know what I'm saying? She's Monique. Hey! She's peculiar. Praise God. She's set apart. She is, she is distinct. Woo! God said, I'm going to give you, I'm not just going to give you somebody that's unique. I'm going to give you somebody that's more unique. Okay? Monique. <laughs> there it is. All right. So, extraordinary. That's another word. And then distinctive. Distinctive. Which is the word distinct? That's what the word peculiar means. You are distinct. Now, let's finish off the rest of that scripture in 1 Peter 2.9. It says this. It says, so you are all these things. You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. Watch this. That you should show forth. Remember what I told you about distinct? It means recognizably different. We're saying here, you are chosen, you are royal, you are holy, and you are peculiar so that you can show forth something. So that they can see something. People are going to see. It says show forth. Watch this. Show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Distinct. I'm going to tell you something, guys. That's what I'm telling you. You shine bright. When you, when you try to blend in, you can't blend in because you'll stand out. You'll shine bright. You'll draw attraction because God took you out of darkness and into the light. You are now the walking light of the world like Jesus. Jesus said that. He said, not only am I the light of the world, so are you. Why? Because you're distinct. That's what makes you different. He took you out of darkness and put you in the light. This is what God's word says. We don't have it up on the board, but God's word says this. You were chosen, again chosen, to tell about the excellent qualities of God. You were chosen to tell the excellent qualities of God. What qualities? Chosen, loyal, holy, peculiar. As he is, so are you in this world. 1 John 4, 17. Come on, somebody. Wow. You are a representative of the kingdom of God. You are representatives of God. 
You are his ambassadors here on this earth. You have a job and you have a title too. Ambassador, a citizen of heaven. You're not just a Christian. That's fine, but too many people call themselves Christian and it's been watered down for too long. No, you're not just a Christian. You're not just a member of a church either. That also has been watered down. It doesn't even mean anything anymore. But when you see yourself distinct because you are a citizen of heaven, you are the kingdom of God. Now, that's when you understand the authority and the power that has been placed on the inside of you to make a difference on this world. Not to blend in, not to be like them, but to be set apart, peculiar, distinct. I'm going to say amen. Now, I'm going to leave you with this last one. I have the message translation. We got it back there. It says this. To tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. (laughs) Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. Praise God. To show, to tell Somebody about the day and night difference he made for you. Guys, here's what I'm telling you. You are distinct. You are recognizably different. And you've got to get that in your system. If you're going to want to be the instruments to do the work that God has for you. And that's the only, listen, he didn't, he didn't, just, he didn't just save you so that you can be saved. Or to get to heaven. I mean, if that was really the, uh, the, the reason, you guys know, the moment we got saved, we would have gone straight to heaven. Think about that for a little bit. He saved you. He took you out of darkness. He took you out of the world. And it put you back into the world as the light with a purpose. Not just to get to heaven. That's not the only reason you got born again. You got born again so that you can be renewed, but bring, bring uh, life from death, uh, from darkness to light, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted, and now you can make a difference out in this world. You have a purpose from God, and that purpose is to walk in distinction, to be distinct, to understand that you're different, you're chosen, you're royal, you're holy, and you're peculiar. Man, see, that's the purpose for why you got born again. Because I, God said, I got work to do. And I want you to help me. I want you to help me. I want you to help me. And I want you to help me. I want you. I want you. I want you. And I want you. And I, he needs me. He wants me to help me. He chose me to help him. Like, come on. Let's do this. God, let's go. What you want me to do? Did y'all get that tonight? Yeah. Come on. Did y'all receive that tonight? Yeah. Someone say, I'm distinct. I'm, distinct. I'm different. I'm peculiar. I'm chosen. I'm royal. And I'm holy. I'm holy. That's it, guys. God made you distinct. Woo, now, when you get home, don't say, hey, I don't stink. I'm distinct. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house. Amen. Hey, listen, at this time, that's all we got for tonight. It's already a little bit time after. At this time, I want to give you guys the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. I told you earlier, amen, come on. Yes, I told you earlier that when you sow that seed, it does something for you when it comes to the word. And I've shared this with you guys before. Um, Number one, out of Malachi chapter three, it says that he would rebuke the devourer for your sake due to your tithes and offerings. And, And then you connect that over to Matthew where it talks about that there was a farmer who sowed some seed and some fell on the wayside. And it says what that means was that there were some people that came, they heard the word, but the moment they left out from where the word was being presented, the devil immediately plucked it out of their hearts so that they couldn't take home the word and they certainly couldn't apply it and they couldn't live it out. Think about that. That's the prayer that I prayed just a while ago for you guys. But when you have your seed and you sow it into this ground, into this ministry, into this work, that seed has the power to rebuke the devourer, the devil. 
Why? Okay. Well, that's, we want to rebuke the devil all of our lives out there. But here's the most important thing. You want to rebuke the devil from stealing that word out of your heart. And this seed that you sow tonight has that power and that authority to do that. So when you walk out these doors, the devil just won't. And then come tomorrow, you're all defeated and all like, well, how am I? See, that's why most people are like that. Because they have not yet to learn how to sow seed, how to tithe, how to give offerings. And that's all found in Malachi chapter 3. Y'all guys know that. And it's still in action now. But I want to help you guys. You want to rebuke the devourer? You want to re rebuke the devil? Sow that seed through tithes and offerings. Amen? Amen? Come on, praise God. Let's go ahead and if you have a seed to sow tonight, we're going to have a, a bucket being up here tonight. You guys, as we dismiss, you guys can come up here and uh, serve through your offerings. We can honor God through it. Let's lift up our offerings to the Lord. Let's go ahead and go, let's stand up to our feet. Let's stand up to our feet. And let's lift up our offerings to the Lord tonight. Say this with me. Father God, tonight I come before you and I bring my offering. I bring my honor. I bring my seed. And I thank you, Father, according to Malachi chapter 3, the devil will be rebuked through this seed. And I thank you, Father, because the devil is rebuked, I will now have that word go deep into the soil of my heart and let it grow 30, 60, and 100 fold. And I thank you, Father, that as of right now, I am distinct. And I receive and believe this word. Let me take it home with me, apply it, and live it out. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. <laughs>